Um, what we're going to do here is actually create a model detail viewer. And I'm going to use the building section that we created in the last tutorial as a starting point. What I'm going to do is zoom on in to the base of this wall, because that's the part that we're going to go through and create a detail of. Okay, and we're going to go through and actually create a brand new view. It's again going to be a callout view. But again, before creating it, I'm going to set a few properties. Rather than being the building section type, I'm going to change it to the detail type. I'm also going to go ahead and reset the scale of this thing. Instead of being inch, I'm going to make it inch and a half. Then I can go through and just highlight the area that I want to include in the view. Kind of right in here. Drag it. And what it'll do is over here in the project browser, it'll create detail zero. Let me go ahead and rename this thing by right clicking. I'm going to call this oh, connection detail uh, dash, and this will be wall to slab. Say OK. And while I'm here, I'm going to also, oh, let me just adjust that a hair so that as opposed to being down on top of that, I'll just adjust the callout tag. Now what I can do is either double click on the callout tag or I can open it over here. Either way it'll work. Get to that new detail and we're ready to get going. So let me start by adding some detail components. We'll just zoom on in. Some of the components will add will be like what we've done in the past. So I'll say annotate. And I'll choose detail components. And let me go ahead and get that 2x6 base plate. And let me rotate it around. Place it right there. Snap it into place. One well, of the next things I want to do is actually put in a component that represents the anchor bolts that will hold that plate to the concrete. Okay, I don't actually have one like that loaded right now. So what I'm going to actually do is go back and I'll say detail components again. In this case, I'm going to load a new family. And what I'll do is I'll go out to my library, the Imperial Library. I'll go to Detail Components. And within there, I can go ahead and find it's under Division 5 Metals, because it's a metal piece. And then it's a common work result for metals, metal fastenings. And then finally I'll go down there, I'll find some anchor bolts. And I want to find the one that hooks to the side. It's a side view of it that has a nut on the top. There it is. I'll bring that on in. Okay, and we're almost ready to place it. We have some different sizes to choose from. I'm going to choose one that, oh, it's not that thick. I'm going to choose the 5 8 inch thick one. And if I go through and place it right here, actually I'm going to place it right there. That's not quite accurate yet. We'll move it in a second. Because what I want to do is actually adjust its properties. So it's not a 9 inch one. I'm actually going to make it a 12 inch one. And now I can take that guy and use the move tool and just move the base there right down to top. Okay, so now our anchor bolt's in place. We've got those pieces for the major connection details in place. Let's go ahead and kind of take a look at this area right over here, where what I want to do is indicate the sand and the gravel that's going to be underneath the slab. So how I'm going to indicate those things is actually with another annotation feature called a fill, or filled region. So what I'm actually going to do is choose the region, okay, and the way it works is we sort of sketch a boundary, and then we choose something to fill it with. So let me zoom on in over here so we can kind of do a good job of sketching this. Okay, and we'll start drawing our boundary. In terms of what I want to draw, let me go ahead and, oh, I'll just start over here. I'm going to come on up, come on over, come on down, and then finally come on back. Okay, this has all the same rules that we're used to. Where, okay, I'm going to make that three inches apart. So I want three inches of sand. But once it's going to involve, basically, we have to have the lines all adjoining, and we might need to trim things if necessary to make that happen. Let me go ahead and finish that off. Okay, it actually filled it with gravel, which is what I wanted. There's a couple different things that are set up as regions right now. I could have chosen a crosshatch, or I'm going to choose the gravel. And that's actually what I wanted. Next up, we're going to go through and draw another filled region above that to represent the sand layer. So again, I'm going to go say region. I'll draw the boundary. And in the same sort of way, I'll come on over. I'll pull on up. I'll pull on here. Okay. And then for this one, let me go ahead and complete it. And again, I can come back to the type selector and choose that I want it to be sand. One of the last things we have to do, two more things really, 
Okay, we're going to go back to the wall. In the wall, if we wanted to sort of add a little more detail, it needs a couple more features. One is the insulation that's going to be in the wall, and there's actually an insulation tool right here, which lets us indicate that. I'll choose it, and when we choose it, we choose the width of the insulation, and really how we want to place it. We'll place it to the center of the wall. So five and a half insulation. Let me kind of start down here at the top. I'll just pull on up. Okay, and this is going to add insulation to the wall. And finally, oh, let me go ahead and take care of this issue right down here in the corner where although we've modeled the wall is stopping right at the bottom of, or the top of the floor slab, it's not quite accurate. Usually we have that thing extend, or the stucco extend a little bit beneath the slab. We do that so that water doesn't seep in right at that level. So we extend that a little bit below, and we also go through and put a little piece of flashing called a drip edge in there to keep the water from seeping underneath. So there's a detail line, and we're going to choose a type for the line. I've actually set up, oh, do I have something in there? I don't have a type for that line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to Manage, and I'm going to go through and set up a line style. And I'm going to create something, oh, just called Metal Flashings. And for that Metal Flashings, I'll choose a color. Let me make them red so they stand out very prominently. And I'll make them a very thick width, like 5. Say OK. Now I can come back to Annotate and go to Detail Lines again. I can choose the line style here. I'll make it Metal Flashings. And what I'll do is actually just draw a line in here. Now, detailed components really just are a series of lines. Sometimes we go through and create our own components when ones don't exist already. Now that we've created our metal drip edge to go ahead and have the water sheen off the building and not seep back under, we still have to go ahead and take care of this guy. And this guy is our outer piece of stucco. I actually bring it down a little bit so that it sort of meets that. So what I do is I say modify the wall, find the cut profile. It's under the view, and it's way over here. It's called cutting the profile. And if I choose it, what I can do is then go back and choose a specific model element that I want to change. And what I do is actually just sort of draw a revised sketch of what I want it to look like. So I'm going to come on down. I'll come on down to here. On this other side, I'll come down over here. So what I wanted to do is actually come down and meet that drip edge. Then finally I'll use the modify or the trim tool. I'll trim this to this. And by doing that, what I've done is actually extended the model element down. Let me go ahead and turn on my fat line widths. Okay, and that's really what we want to have there. So let's go ahead and add a few notes. We're going to go to the annotate tool. We're going to go to the text. I'm going to take a look at the settings. What I'm going to do is just start putting some annotations on here, explaining what's in our view. We'll start up here. We'll reference back to the wall assembly type A. And I just put a reference in like that because I don't actually want to spell it all again. It was all spelled out in another detail. So you don't want to duplicate that information because it might change in the two different views. This over here is going to be our 5 8 inch anchor bolt at 24 inches on center. This is going to be our 2x6 base plate. Can align these things nicely. Finally down here, let's go ahead and call out the special little drip edge piece that we put together. Let me zoom out. This might be a good place to uh, right to there. Okay, and now we'll say that great. This is going to be, oh, what is it? That's our concrete slab. In this case, I'm going to shift it over to be left justified though instead. This is going to be our sand. And this final piece down here is our three inches minimum compacted, oops, compacted gravel. Once this thing's all together and we are ready, we can now go ahead and place this on a sheet too. What I'm going to do is go through the wall details, and I will take that detail. There'll be some more that follow it with it. I'm going to drag it on out here and put it on the sheet. It's going to look fine there. Notice that it's over here on sheet S2. So what's going to happen is if we go back over to the wall section, you notice it's now sheet 1 S2. 
referring and cross-referencing everything back together. Again, if I double-click on it, it'll come back in there so all the cross-referencing is working and hanging the whole drawing together. Let's turn our attention now to creating a different type of detail, one that shows information about items that haven't been included in the Revit model. To do that, let's switch back over to the wall section A and look at an example. If we look at this area here at the bottom of the windowsill, this is a great example of a place where we've included some information in the building model, but we don't actually have an accurate detail of how the windowsill is going to go ahead and connect to the wall framing. And to go through and model all that information in detail in the Revit model for each of the windows in the model would actually be a tremendous burden. That probably isn't worth it. So we'll turn to using a different type of detail that's actually great for doing this type of view. What we're going to do is go through and create something called a drafting view. And we'll go to the View tab. I'll choose New Drafting View. Let me go ahead and name this. And we will give it a scale. I'm going to go ahead and give it a big scale. Let's make that three inches per foot. Say OK. Now a drafting view is actually a big blank slate. And in the drafting view, we can really go through and put whatever we want. And what we typically do is use the features under the Annotate tab to go through and create lines, filled regions, place detail components, text and annotations. We can really do this just the way we've been using CAD tools like AutoCAD in the past. So let's go ahead and start creating a detail to illustrate what we have in mind for that windowsill. Let's start by creating some filled regions that are going to represent the layers of the actual wall assembly we'll be attaching the windowsill to. So we'll choose the filled region tool. Let me say that we'll just do that as a series of rectangles. So we'll draw a first rectangle. Oh, for this first one, let me go through and adjust its thickness. Let's see, for the thickness of this one, we want that to be, oh, about five and a half inches. What we're doing is just matching the uh, thickness of the wall layers themselves. Let me zoom on in there a little bit. We'll finish that one out. In terms of the fill for this region, I can go through and choose. You'll see that I actually have some defined here. I'll call that the stud layer, which will then show up with a fill that was appropriate. In this case, it looks fairly blank. Let's go ahead and do some more field regions. I'm going to create one that's going to represent the gypsum board layer on the inside of the wall. So I'll pull on down. This one's only going to be half an inch thick. So I could again choose the thickness. For this region, let's choose it. And we'll select the fill type for it to be. I have something set up in here, which is gypsum wall board. Okay, which is just slightly sandy texture. Let's take a look at that. Now we'll create another region to represent the sheathing layer on the outside of the building. For this one, we're going to go ahead and choose a plywood fill. Let me make that, again, about half an inch thick. Choose that and make it half an inch. Close that. And then I'll choose a pattern for it that's going to be the plywood vertical. And finally, we're going to go through and create a filled region, which is going to re represent the stucco layer on the outside. We'll draw that as a rectangle. The stucco layer is going to be 7 eighths of an inch thick. Complete that. And finally, I can go through and choose fill for that. Beautiful. So these are all just lines. They're lines that we know represent the actual building elements, but they really don't have any intelligence to them the same way the wall layers do. But that's OK. These are going to be useful for what we need to have done in terms of documenting what the windowsill is going to look like. Okay, now, having placed filled regions representing the layers of the wall assembly, we're now ready to add components that will represent the framing elements, the window itself, as well as some architectural trim elements. So let's go ahead and start by going to the Annotate tab. We'll choose the Component tool. And we're going to start by adding some framing elements. I'll scroll on down. I'm going to go to the nominal lumber, choose a 2x6, and I will rotate that by hitting the spacebar, placing one 2x6 to represent the windowsill. I'll place a second 2x6 to represent the second or the double windowsill. Now we can go through and add the window itself. To do that, what I'm going to do is go to the Insert tab, and I actually have a manufacturer's detail. The manufacturer's provided a DWG file, which contains a very detailed profile of the windowsill component. I could link that in as a CAD file, but I'm actually going to go ahead and import it. The reason I'm going to import it is that way, if the file ever gets moved relative to the Revit project file, the detail will be embedded within the Revit project file, so I don't have to worry about losing it. I can choose the windowsill detail DWG file, I'm going to place it manually as opposed to automatically because by placing it manually I'll have very detailed control over just where it goes into the drawing. 
There you can see the very detailed component and I can move it and place it just right here. What I want to have is the nailing flange of the detail just right at the edge of the plywood sheathing. Okay, let me zoom on in there so you can see it. Okay, so that's what I want, the nailing flange just right past the edge of the plywood. Having placed the window sill, I can now actually indicate the nailing that will hold it in place. To do that, what I'm going to go to is, again, a detail component. And you'll find that we actually have a detail component for nails. I'll scroll on up and you'll see we have some common nails. I'll choose 10 penny nails and I'll place one just right here going through the nailing flange on the window and the plywood going into the wood framing at the window sill. We'll add just a few more things to this detail to go through and complete it. And one is going to be insulation. We want to always have insulation in our wall. I'll choose the insulation tool and choose a thickness. Five and a half will be appropriate for these walls. So I can pull on down. Let me just add the insulation to the full thickness of the wall. Now to complete this detail, the final thing, at least in terms of the elements we'll show, will be a few pieces of architectural trim and woodwork. Those are actually also available typically as components. Let's load up a few. I'm going to start with something called the window stool. You can think of that as the plate that appears right across the top of the studs or the sill elements so they're not exposed. The window stool is, let me see if I can find it here. There it is. Go ahead and choose a four and a half inch wide section of it. You'll see what it looks like. That's just a plate that we're going to place right here at the window sill to give it a nice finished edge. I notice I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap between the window stool and the window itself. We're going to fill that with caulking in just a moment so that we can go through and have a nice expansion joint as the weather changes so that we don't have any cracking at that edge. I'm also going to go through and add a cove to the bottom underneath the window stool to clean up this uh, joint. To do that, I'll again go to the components, but I don't actually have one loaded into the family. So what I need to do is load one. I'll choose to load and then go out to the detail components. If I go to division six for wood and plastic and I go to architectural woodwork and finally wood trim, you'll actually find some cove molding in there. And that's what I have in mind. It's a little piece of almost quarter round. And I'll place it right here. For our final piece, what I'm going to do is go through and actually add my own little custom filled region to represent the caulking at this joint. So I can choose the filled region tool. I'll just use a rectangular surface. That'll be my caulking. Let me complete that. Now, I don't actually have a fill pattern that looks good for what I want the caulking to be represented as. So what I'll do is, instead I'll edit and duplicate the type creating a new fill type just for the caulking. Then I can choose a fill pattern. When I go on out and kind of check in the fill library, let's see if I could find something. How about that diagonal cross hatch? I think that looks pretty good. We'll choose that, say OK. And now if I zoom on out, you'll see that at least as far as the components that I'm trying to represent go, the detail is looking pretty complete. To complete our drafting view, let's now add just a few text components and some break lines just to clean up the detail and get it ready to place on the drawing sheets. I'm going to start by just choosing the text tool. And what I'll do is actually just add some text notes that'll represent, oh, and explain just all the different components that I've placed in the detail. So I can say things like, oh, this is going to be the window unit. I can also go through and explain that in this area right here, what we're looking at is, well, let's say those are 10, penny we know it is D, 10D nails, the manufacturer's installation specs. I can also put some notes on to indicate just anything that's not going to be entirely clear. For example, the caulking. I think that's an important detail, so let me go ahead and call it out. I'll say that that's caulking. I want to make sure that gets in there. I can say that this is going to be, oh, the four and a half inch as well as I can call out this cove molding too. Make sure that no one misses anything that I've put into the detail. A final step that we often use in cleaning up our details and getting them ready to present is to actually break the edges of the detail, to hide things that are beyond the boundary of what we want to show. And we use something called a break line to do that. You'll find the break line under the annotate. It's a detail component. Let me go ahead and bring it in and show you how it's used. The break line really has a line, which is really the cut 
between the detail of what's going to be shown and what isn't going to be shown. And if I place it, anything beyond that line will be hidden. In this case, let me kind of shove it down just a very little bit. Maybe I'll even go through and just move my text down a little bit so I can bring the break line down even further. What we're doing is indicating just really where the detail stops and obscuring anything beyond that line. Now at the top it didn't make a very big difference. Let's put it at the bottom though too because it'll sort of show up there a lot more strongly. Again, I'll put the break line here. That's about as far as I want to see. Notice it has this region which hides anything in the detail. When this is on top of the detail, I can rotate that so that the hiding region is actually below. And I can oh, move that down just a hair, just hide anything I don't want to see. Okay, again, these break lines are just a standard convention we use to indicate where a piece is going to be shown, but we want to cut off and not show any further of the wall assembly. Having completed this drafting view showing a typical window sill detail, we're now ready to go ahead and put cross references that show this detail in other views where the detail should apply. So what we can do is actually scroll on down over to, let me go to the wall section A because I know we have a window sill showing there. And if I'd like to indicate that this typical window sill detail would apply here, what I'll do is as follows. I'll click the view tab and I'll choose a call out again, but this time I'll do something special. Rather than creating a brand new call out to create a brand new model view, what I'll do is say let's reference another view. And if I choose that, I can scroll down through the list and you'll actually find that windowsill detail or drafting view listed there. We can choose it and now when I go through and place the call out, and you'll notice the tag actually says similar. What's happening here is it's actually indicating that there is a view. It may not be exactly the geometry that's shown here as with a detailed model view, but it's going to be similar to this. And if I double click on the tag, you'll actually go out and see where the drafting view appears. Go back to wall section A, that's all looking fine. The last thing that's waiting for us to do is actually place that drafting view on a sheet. So I can go to the wall detail sheet, let me do that. In the wall detail sheet, I will go through now and just find my drafting view. There's the window sill typical, and I'll drag it right in. Okay, let's go through and I'll put it right here. Very good. Notice that as it's been placed on the sheet, it is shown up as view number three on the sheet. If I go on back to the wall section, you'll see that the cross reference is in place. It's view number three on sheet number S2 as shown through the callout tag. And that's how we go through and create a drafting view.